guys, welcome to Dave Take Finance. And in this video, we would be looking after capital budgeting and financial management. So let's start with the agenda for this video. Introduction to capital budgeting. Then we would move forward to meaning of capital budgeting. After that, we would look at the process in which capital budgeting takes place. And then we would cover the decisions which are taken in capital budgeting. And finally, we would be looking after the techniques which are used in capital budgeting. So uh, try to understand this uh, word in more simplified manner. When we are talking about capital budgeting, what does it mean? It is a long term investment decision. So what capital budgeting is, it is long term investment decision. I'm repeating it because uh, it would be there in your mind. Whenever we are talking about capital budgeting, it is long term investment decision. So simplify this word in two separate words. So what is capital representing over here and what is budgeting representing over here? So try to relate capital with capital expenditure. I'll tell you why. Because capital expenditure represents those expenditures which are large in nature, which means that it would involve a huge amount of cost to be incurred and the benefit of which would be reaped over a longer period of time. So for example, in any business, when we are purchasing any machinery, we are putting a lot of cost to purchase that machinery. But is that uh, we are just purchasing it to sell it and get the income back? No, we are purchasing it to utilize it in the production process. So the benefit is being reaped over a longer period of time. So this is what capital expenditure represents. And when we are talking about capital budgeting, which is long term investment decisions, it is also a kind of capital expenditure because a huge cost is being incurred in the business uh, and the benefits would be reaped over a longer period of time in form of cash flows and the profits incurred by investing in any particular project. So what could be the reasons? It could be expansion of business, any new project investment, any new product development and many such reasons which is involving huge cost. So this is what capital part is representing. Now, when we talk about budgeting, what does budget means? You prepare a budget, which is planned allocation of funds. So uh, what you do, you uh, make some estimations regarding the expenditure, would, which would be incurred. And what happens once you are decided with the expenditures that would be incurred, you allocate funds, you allocate funds, which would be there uh, to meet those expenditures. And if you are running short of the funds, you would try to raise the finance from any source. So when we are talking in concern of business, what happens when the business runs short of funds? They try to raise the capital from borrowings in the form of borrowings or by issuing share capital. So this is what happens to invest in certain projects. And the main part is that in budgeting, what, does we, what, what do we do? We also set targets for profitability. So here also in capital budgeting, when we are talking about long term investment decisions, we are talking about the uh, estimations which we are making regarding the cost to be incurred, the estimations which we are making regarding the returns which, we, which uh, the project would be availing over a longer period of time and how the allocation of funds would be made and the set target which the business wants to achieve in concern of the cash flows to be incurred and in concern of the profitability to be incurred. Okay, so let's understand it in a more defined manner. Capital budgeting is the process of making decisions regarding long-term investments after evaluating the cost to be incurred and expected returns to be generated in form of cash flow and profit over a period of time. So the same thing that capital budgeting is a decision which is being taken, a decision regarding the long term investment and thus it becomes very important, you know, because uh, when you are investing in a, any project, it is involving huge cost and thus you can't go wrong because it would incur a lot of loss for your business. And so before investing in any project, you need to evaluate that project. What would be the returns? What would be the benefit over a period of time? And what is the cost that you are putting in it? And thus you would be able to come at a specific decision whether to move on with that project or not, whether to accept that proposal or not. So this is what capital budgeting is talking about. It is purely an investment decision which is being formed. So these investment decisions are large in nature involving huge capital expenditure. As I told, it facilitates comparative study of alternative projects. 
so what happens when we are talking about capital budgeting these are the investment decisions so we just don't go with a single project because we have to make investment we consider many projects we consider several proposals which are being made in terms of the investment so the business wants to expand now it is having uh, choices of various locations what it would do it would try to analyze that uh, setting up a new plant in any particular location as compared to other locations will it be useful or not so it try to analyze different locations and this is just an example so this is how it works when you are uh, investing when you have when any business is trying to invest in any particular project it just can't go with that project it has to evaluate several projects along with it so that it can make a comparative analysis and this is what capital budgeting facilitates it facilitates comparative study of alternative projects it involves various techniques used to accept or reject any investment project so it is uh, it is like uh, uh, before investing in any project you are able to analyze the benefits of that project whether that project would be successful or not so yeah the business want to be 100% correct but at least it could be uh, at least it could be reasonably correct to move on with uh, certain projects and it could minimize the risk involved so by using some of the techniques which are also referred as capital budgeting techniques which gives indication whether to accept or reject any particular project so this would be more clear when i would be talking about the capital budgeting techniques it also helps in analysis of whether project will be useful or not in regards of cost recovery cash flows and required rate of return in a specific period of time i think no need of repetition because i have already told how capital budgeting works and what does it look at and it is an irreversible decision why it is irreversible decision because so much of cost is being put these are the investment decisions which are larger in nature so a huge cost is being incurred so once you have incurred that huge cost you can't say that oh i made a mistake and now i need to invest in certain other projects that would be bringing up the losses for your business and does it want to be compromised does you need to be careful before taking any such decisions now let's understand the capital budgeting process how does it works so what happens is that uh, in starting we would uh, start with the investment pro uh, proposals so there are uh, various investment projects which uh, the companies look for in which uh, they could uh, invest their uh, invest uh, their funds to expand the business to run the business or for any several reasons so there are at the first stage investment proposals and then these investment projects or investment proposals are evaluated and along with it various alternative projects are also evaluated so that we can get a concern on how one project would be useful over the other project and thus we can come at the best one to make the investment so that the chances of minimizing risk and maximizing return would be greater and after making the evaluation of alternative projects we come at the decision making and this evaluation and decision making is facilitated together with the help of capital budgeting techniques which tells us whether to accept or reject a particular project and what would be the benefit out of it so after the decision is being taken decision has been made we prepare a budget so this is uh, this stage is called capital budget preparation where the budget is prepared where the funds are allocated the estimated expense expenditures are met and a set target is considered to be achieved after the capital budget is prepared we move on to the stage of implementation where the capital budgeting part is actually implemented so the investment is made the project which is decided after so much of evaluations and using uh, the techniques of capital budgeting then that project the investment in that project is done but even after implementation what is the last stage it is review so review is very important so even after you have considered all these aspects you need to continuously review whether the project is going well or not so that uh, you can keep a uh, consideration over the returns which you expect uh, from that project over a period of time now let's have a look at the capital budgeting techniques 
So starting with the payback period, what do you mean? It denotes the time period in which initial cost of investment would be recovered. So uh, let me tell you, all these techniques would give you a brief on whether to accept or reject a particular project and how that project would be beneficial. So the first one, payback period, represents the time period in which the cost would be incurred the cost of in, uh, investment would be recovered so shorter the time period the better would be the project and then comes the accounting rate of return it is a financial ratio representing the average rate of return on investment so you can get with the definition only that it is a ratio which would represent how much the rate of return on investment would be so the higher the rate of return on investment the better would be that investment project Coming to net present value, this is the most commonly used to capital budgeting techniques to move on with any investment project. It denotes the difference between present value of all cash inflows and present value of all cash outflows. So what are the cash inflows? The money coming inside the business. And what are the cash outflows? The money going outside the business. So obviously in any business we would, we would want that more income is generated rather, rather than the expenses which are being made. So cash inflows are representing the income and cash outflows are representing the expenses so a positive net present value would represent whether to accept the project uh, that the project should be accepted and a negative net present value would represent that the project should not be accept, accepted because uh, there the cash outflows would be greater than the cash inflows Coming to benefit cost ratio or profitability index, it is a financial ratio representing the analysis of benefit from a project in respect to cost. So this is also a kind of a ratio which is trying to analyze what would be the cost incurred in that particular investment and what would be the benefit which could be reaped out of that investment. And thus it is giving you a short of idea whether to move on with that project or not. Now comes the internal rate of return. It is the rate at which NPV of all cash flows equals zero. So it is also one of the most popular capital budgeting techniques which uh, uh, tries to calculate the rate at which the net present value of all cash flows would be equal to zero. So this is all about capital budgeting techniques. I would be covering all these techniques uh, in a more in a more defined manner with the help of examples with the help of numericals being solved in my upcoming videos so this was just a brief introduction about these techniques it is a huge topic so i would be covering it in detail with the help of numerical examples so that you can understand how you can move on with a project on uh, how you could move on with a project and how you could analyze the benefits uh, out of that project so these all techniques I would be covering in my upcoming videos. I hope you would be looking after my videos and you would subscribe to my channel to keep a track on uh, on these videos, tutorials, which would make you understand financial management in a better way. So thank you for watching. Do like and share my videos and don't forget to subscribe to my channel, Dave Take Finance. Thank you all.